because all the there color graphics. Oh, there it is. Yep. <laughs> What's up, Charles? Nothing much, brother, brother. Aloha Friday. Yes. Aloha share. Aloha share. All right, there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, my thing. Son of a gun. I'm totally unprepared. Well, I will float it here. So excited oh, no. for tonight. <clears throat> wow. I think we'll get a lot of people tonight. There we go. Share, share, share. Share, share, share. Yeah, we, uh, Dr. Miskovich is on tonight. Um, you know, considering what, what's been going on here in Hawaii, you know, every day we're finding out more information about the, the Delta variant. Uh, today's news were quite, is quite disturbing that it's now in every county, uh, in every county. And uh, it, it's frustrating because there is, there is no reconsideration by our state. We're just moving forward. You heard yesterday, the governor said as of July 8th, which is next week, or in a week, a little over a week, uh, anyone can fly in from the uh, Trans-Pacific flights. Anyone from the mainland can come in with just a card. And um, we all know, I, I cannot believe that this government is so naive that they believe that no one can provide or produce false, fake vaccination cards. We know that it's happening already. We know that it's easily obtainable but no no discussion it's sorry we're moving we're opening and guys go get vaccinated because if you don't you're gonna get sick wow I, that's all i can say is wow wow so we wanted to bring on dr miskovich um i don't know what his position i know he believes in testing and i, and I agree i think we should not let up on testing and uh, we'll see what he's got to say tonight. We'll see what he's got to say. You know, I've, I've always been one to believe this this thought. And again, you know, good old Uncle Charlie, there he goes with his analogies again. But I do want to say that if we are swimming at a beach that is known to have great whites, right? The great white and the swimmer cannot coexist in the same place because one is one is the food, one is the prey, and one is the hunter, right? Mm -hmm. This virus is, is like that. We're opening the floodgates and telling those, hey, go play with the virus. There's a good chance you may not get it. If you've been vaccinated, there's a good chance. You may get it, but not as bad. But you know, there's, it's, it's like rolling the dice, right? And there's no guarantee unless the dice are loaded. So in this scenario, what's loaded about humans and variants? What's, what is the loaded factor? I don't get it. That's just my thoughts. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> it's one of those things, you know, again, I relate a lot of things to football. It's one of those things. Hey, Essie, aloha from, uh, all the way from Florida. Thank gosh, it's late in Florida. Thank you, Essie for jumping on, you know, I, I relate everything to, to football and, and it's like a fourth and long deep in your own territory. And for those of you that don't know football, I apologize, but you, you get that fourth and long situation. You're on your own 15 yard line. No one fakes a punt on the deep in your own territory, fourth and long. And you get the coach that'll come up and he'll do a fake punt and it'll work. And he's a hero. They end up winning the game and they say, God, the guy, you know, he was awesome. You miss, you, you fake the punt and you, and, and you don't make the first down, then you become a zero. You, you go from a hero to a zero. You know, the difference is we're talking about a game. We're talking about a sporting event. We're talking about two teams that are trying their best to win the game. And at the moment, the coach felt that he could fool them with a fake punt. Again, if he's successful, 
he's a hero. If he's not, then he's a zero. That's what we're doing. It's fourth and long. We're deep in our own territory because the variant has, has come here. And we're, we're going to fake punt and hope, hope that everybody gets vaccinated, that everybody that comes over here from the mainland will have a valid card and not a fake one. We, we hope. And Senator Mercado Kim made it clear early on when she was on our show, she said, hope is not a strategy. But that's kind of what I, that's how I feel, Charlie. It's fourth and long and, and, and our governor and lieutenant governor has called for a fake punt and they're hoping that it works. And if it works, then yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be sitting pretty, but if it doesn't, people will get sick and people will die. That's the difference between a football game when we're talking about real life. Um, and, and that is why we wanted to bring on Dr. Miskovich to, to number one, share about the importance of, uh, or information of how, how important it is to know about this variant. I mean, I've been reading a lot about the variant today from uh, credible sources. This is nothing to mess around with, nothing to mess around with. And definitely not something they want to take chances on. I understand. I read the comments. There's a lot of people that are excited about July 8th. A lot of people are saying that's the right decision. But we got to be careful. We have to be, be very careful. Anyway. Dr. Yeah. Miskovich is in the room. We're bringing him in. There he is. Man, it's so it's so cool, Charlie. It's so cool when we can have celebrities on our show, like real world celebrities. You know the kind you see on CNN. You know when you watch CNN and you see the guy, and you go, "Wow!" Hey, wait, 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 wait. He may be on CNN, but you you and I have been on MNN before. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, that? Doc? How you doing? Hey, I'm pretty good, but I remember, you know, instead of them putting those little bylines on my um, on on the bottom of my screen, it should say, um, "God is God is start uh, with uh, Mel and Charlie." You know, <laughs> it should, you know, it, that's all it should say. It should let yeah. should tell the truth that uh, this is where it all started. Made me comfortable. Now, now, hey, thanks, guys. Good to be here. The next time you're on CNN, just right before they when when they can't, when it's too late for them to cut you off, you just say. Hey, a real quick shout out to Mel and Charlie. That's it. Man. <laughs> yeah. And it's all this last one I was on, which is, I don't know, the guys, this is just crazy to me. Um, when I do, when you do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's, it's worldwide live across the United States, across the world. And I, and I, I don't know, it's still just for me. I just pinch myself and, and it's, I'm coming up on my 30th time. And, you know, I guess when you do that, when you have the entire world scrutinizing every word you say, I guess they want to hear what I'm saying or they wouldn't ask me back, man. So I'm, I'm, I'll keep doing it. And you guys know me and you guys do the same thing. And you are inspiration to me because you tell the truth. You look at the people in the eye and you speak in a language that they understand and you tell the truth. And that's all we need. That's what I wish people would be doing in our state and across the world. And instead of the blah, 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 either political verbiage or the, um, or just saying something to pump some special interest. Now, people need to know the truth, you know, just like we're talking Delta variant. But thank you guys. You, you have been, um, you, you know, seriously, you're an inspiration because of how you guys have rose up and just been, been leaders for our state to, to be a, a voice of truth. So thank you. Well, Doc, let me ask you. Have you been involved with the Olympics at all? In any way, testing the, the, the um, I guess the US trial, Olympic trials? Have you been involved in um, any of them? <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the COVID medical director for the US Olympics. They called me, I, no. I run all I, the I, testing I, for the United States Olympics, so. And, I had uh, to ask the question, I had to ask the question. So there you have it, folks. We have the person that's making sure our athletes are safe right now. And Charlie, that, that, that is why I said he, we have a celebrity because, you know, just the other night, Doc, some, somebody came on here and said, hey, you guys should get experts on your show 
uh, and, and shut you guys' mouth if, if you're not a doctor. That, that's what they told us right there on the chat. <clears throat> and I was, I was taken aback because that's all we've had. Uh, from the very beginning, Doc, when we, when we started this show, you were one of the very first, if not the first, medical expert that we brought on. I, I, I don't think there was anyone before you, really, yeah. medical expert. And, and that's all we've tried to do. You're, you're from what you were doing here, and, and I'm not just saying this to blow, blow smoke up your cola. I just want the public, a lot of people that are across the country that may not know who you are, you, you were the testing expert here in Hawaii. You, you, you tested, I don't know, a million, half a million, whatever it was, you were the guy doing the testing, setting up the testing protocols, went to the NCAA, took care of all of the NCAA football to allow them to continue their season. Now you were at the U.S. Olympics. So to that person, I hope you're watching, this is for you. Thank you guys. And uh, yeah, and I still kind of um, think about it because you guys remember way back when um, I was doing it early on with threat of handcuffs and cease and desist. That's back when the Bruce Anderson, Sarah Park um, duo was in play and they were literally trying to find ways to either arrest me. I got cease and desist letters and I was like, uh, -uh man, you're gonna have to put me in jail because this is what we need. And um, and, uh, you know, and obviously then when I got my phone call from the whistleblower, that was uh, a real traumatic time. And then I got uh, a phone call out of the blue from Tulsi. And, um, and then we stood up to, to, I'll never forget when we, we stood in some of those press conferences and multiple times. And finally, the, the press conference was either Parker Anderson goes or the governor should think about resigning. And, uh, you know, she was pretty bold. But, you know, that 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 took too long in my mind and um and you know it's clear you know guys this is not I, when people look and i'm getting interviewed all over the country and i'm dealing with 21 different states and they're like well how do you know how to do this i was like listen the roadmap was there when we started when i designed my roadmap all i did is look to south korea south korea um Taiwan and uh, and um, some of the areas in Europe or in uh, Asia that already had the disease had already devastated, but then they found a way to stop it. And I used my connections, one of which you guys know, Jerome Kim, who you had on, who is just brilliant. He's such a great guy. And I used connections all over and I just took what they did that worked, redesigned it for Hawaii and it worked. It worked all over, whether it was Maui, the Big Island, et cetera. And then I took it and people saw, whoa, what did you do in Hawaii? They call me, can you come help us? I said, oh, sure, okay. And that's what's crazy. I don't advertise, I haven't advertised one time. People just kind of look at what we did and see what we did and saw how successful it was. What do I do? I spend at least five hours a day studying. I'm connecting with experts all over the world. I'm connecting with laboratory experts all over the world. And the bottom line is I've said this on CNN numerous times. The, the, the book is already written. We already know what is going to happen. All we have to do is turn to Europe. Look what happened there. All we have to do is look at, look at what the devastation that's going on in South America. We know, look at what happened with India where the Delta variant was started. We know what's happening. We just have to look across the world and we gotta be prepared. And it's, it's starting right now. And so, um, uh, you know, it, it's just so frustrating that people, you know, will sit and act like they don't know what's going on or act like they do know what's going on. And it's totally contrary to what is going on, is going to happen, and it's very predictable. So, sorry, I'm very passionate about this. You know, Doc, and, you know, Doc, and that's why we appreciate you on our show. Um, and I do have a question, but before, I just want to ask real quick, before I forget, does doctor know if Japan will cancel the Olympics due to the spikes currently happening? No, have you any, no, no idea. Chance. No, 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 I do know. I do know. I mean, I'm dealing with the whole ways up to the executive level of the Olympic committees. I mean, my involvement with the Olympics has been very deep since, you know, probably um, April, you know, we've been all over the country and I'm dealing with leadership everywhere. Uh, especially, you know, I'm in, I've been the director for all the big testing, swimming, um, track and field, and uh, gymnastics. We're also doing rugby, and I've advised uh, a lot of the others. But, you know, those are the real biggies. And um, uh, it, it, to put it bluntly, here's, 
here is the, 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 the real detail. Japan has spent a tremendous amount of money to prepare for these Olympics after canceling them once. Uh, every country had to cancel once and is spending a tremendous amount of money doing hopefully the same thorough COVID precautions we've done in the United States. And then there's NBC and all the TVs. They all billions of dollars at stake. Well, guess what? All of them have clauses that say, if you push the button and cancel, you pay everybody else. And the bottom line is, is that um, it's all insurance company money, but, uh, but the bottom line is it's, a, it's almost like a massive game of chicken. No one's going to push the button because of the massive uh, issue. Now, I don't care about that. I care about the people, and I really love the athletes. I've got to know so many of these great athletes, and it's been such a pleasure. And um, the fact is, is that the United States is so thorough that we're in great shape. Now, what, um, what the other countries are going to do, I'm not sure. But all of us who live in Hawaii, and I've had to, I've had to answer this question, all of us who live in Hawaii know something that I have stood up for, and that is, guys and ladies, do not worry about Japan. They have an excellent medical care system. They are so thorough and um, do, do, they're not gonna leave anything to chance. And the only thing when I've been talking to the athletes, they're all, they're all there to compete, but they're all a little bummed that they're not gonna have the major athlete experience because they are gonna be really, really curtailed in what they're doing. They have daily testing when they're there. There's all type of protocols if they're positive, there's all kind of isolation, there's bubbles they have to be in. So when you look at how thorough they are with the athletes and then how selective they'll be with the uh, individuals who will potentially the small number be able to attend 100% the, the Olympics is going to go on. I feel very confident about that. So let me ask you, Doc, um, switching gears, you, the, the variant has touched on in every single corner of the of Hawaii. So my question is, we know it's dangerous. But, you know, if you're vaccinated, you have some level of protection to a, to a certain extent. But again, why is a state allowing everything to fully open? It's like allowing your child to go rollerblading on a highway and they're, they're opening up traffic. You, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're opening up the highway to traffic. It's, I, I don't understand it. It's just like you, you, you run a gamble, you run a chance of, of something happening. I totally, I totally um, agree and am concerned about it. I see I, I, my bigger issues that I have right now, uh, as you guys, I think maybe have saw my last piece on CNN with the Delta, uh, with the Delta variant. And that is how, um, how contagious it is. It is like, mm -hmm. as we know, double the number of hospitalizations out of a study that just came out of Scotland. The uh, belief of the effective number of individuals are, are space and the amount of contact you have to get to the viral droplets is so minor compared to what was before. That's why it's so contagious that, um, you know, it really, really, it, that's why it's spreading. That's why look how, look how quickly it's spreading in our state right now. Now, here's the good news. I'm getting asked this in social media all the time. The good news is Pfizer and Moderna look to be quite um, effective against it. J and J, you're probably going to still have a 70% chance that you're going to have effective uh, um, uh, protection. But, you know, I, I think I've said in some of my social media, if you're an elderly person or anybody, regardless of the age, that has had uh, any of the health risks that make you predisposed, then you should be very careful with this with this variant. And, uh, you know, it is the the... The data that's coming out now, and remember, I like to be data-driven, is very fortunate that even with the Delta variant, the majority of the deaths, and that's it's almost like exclusively, are happening in people that are unvaccinated. So that's good. So that's just a little bit of shout out to the people to please get vaccinated. If you are vaccinated, you're going to be uh, a, a much, much safer from, the, from, the, um, uh, from getting it. Now, the problem is, if you look at the vaccination rates in our state for the age groups, you know, look at where the age groups, now look at this, especially that, um, you know, you go to that 18 to 29, 30, 39, 40, 49, they're not as high, 
unfortunately, our Kapuna are well vaccinated. That's great. But, you know, we, we have a, a big gap in that age group. So, and then think about this, guys. What's, what, are the, what are the risk factors, right? What are the three main risk factors for COVID that will cause you to be hospitalized in serious con consequences? Diabetes, hypertension, obesity. Those are, number, those are three. I, I think we all know on this show and everybody listening knows those are pretty big in Hawaii, right? Those are pretty big. And if you look at those age groups, we got a pretty big incidence of that. So we have a vulnerable group of our population. If you look at the percentages, look at, you know, you guys are data masters. Look at the percentage of people that go on from 20 up to 50 that are actually vaccinated and take the skew of the upper age groups. And, you know, we have a good 60% of our population or so who's vulnerable, right? Who's vulnerable to the Delta. And, and, um, and then, as I said on my last CNN appearance, take the country, take a circle from the edge of Florida up into like Kentucky and, you know, Missouri, which is having a big spike now down across, across the Texas, that center of the South. Vaccination rates barely 30%. Then it goes up a little bit to the Midwest and up into the West. Um, hate to say it, it's a red and blue divide, but it is. And you have dismal vaccination rates. And you're starting right now to see the surge of the Delta going through those states. They are really in for some trouble in the fall. They are basically prepared to hit another major trouble. And we're going to have our state open to those individuals for just you know free for all coming into it. I'm a little worried about that. That does worry me. That does worry me. I'm okay with vaccinations. If you're vaccinated, I don't have any problem. I, I can't get into the technicalities as I heard you guys on the start to say, how do you verify? I have no clue. You know, I agree that's a real issue. I, I have no clue how verification occurs. It is a major issue. So, but anyways, I could, I ramble. I'm sorry, I'll shut up. <laughs> well, no, but I think your, your, your concerns are echoed by, I would say, probably 90% of the people watching this show right now, definitely for Charlie and I, because we've been talking about it for so long. You mentioned earlier that, that the book has already been written, and if we follow, if we read the books, the pages that uh, uh, from other areas that have this variant, you know, we, the state has a duty to protect everybody, and while everyone has a choice an opportunity to get vaccinated, uh, some won't. And so we understand and accept that and respect that. But yesterday in the governor's uh, press conference, it was yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, we talked about the July 8th opening and they asked him, what number are you going to use as it relates to the 70% the then all restrictions are lifted? Are you gonna use the state's number? Are you gonna use individual counties? Because like you just said, if you take a, 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 an average or vaccination rate for the entire country, that's not representative of those states that are miserably low. So it's, it's not, to me, it's, it's very risky when we, when we say we're gonna, when we reach this percentage of the state number, when you have pockets in the community, every island has different pockets within the community that may be at a 30%, maybe at a 35%. And all it takes is an infected person to come and, and spread that variant. Uh, and then those, per, that those people will be sick. And, and uh, you know, that is my concern, Doc. The um, testing to me, and, and not just because you're the guru in, on testing, but to me, testing was that not that much of an inconvenience to assure the safety of our residents and even our visitors that come here. But come July 8th, there will be no testing. Come seventy percent, there will be no restriction whatsoever. So, is well, that any concern for you? It's massive. It's a it's a massive it's a massive concern. But I, I think I shot this to you guys on an email, and I first want to address something about just in general to have this opening occur, while basically, if you look at the trend now in quote unquote testing our residents it's dropped off precipitously, right? Across every island, it's dropped off. 
And right now, as of today, we have statewide a 1.5% positivity rate, which is a fairly significant jump in the last 10 days. Now, I, I throw a little bit of math out to everybody. So if you're doing half the tests and you have a 1.5% positivity rate, well, and we're, we're, we're popping up 60 people positive or so on here and there. Well, let's go back to where we were with when we were maybe doing a few more tests, even though a lot of those were travel related and say double it. Well, guess what? If you're actually testing with a 1.5% positivity rate, that number, that 1.5 is your reflection of your prevalence and incidence in your state. That means if you just did enough testing, well, we'd have 120 positives. And then theoretically, if you did four times the number of testing, you'd have 240 positives. Because, you know, the majority of us who are, you know, really tracking this do not believe that we are doing enough testing. Everybody's shutting it down. And my question really has to become, are we doing enough testing? Are we slowing down the testing right now? Because we're, we're kind of thinking the Trumpian idea where if we don't test and don't find it, well, then we won't have to report it and everything will look good, right? Is that what we're doing? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying it's one of the theories because if you look at the book across the world, you don't take your pedal off the metal in testing until you get that 1.5% and you precipitously drop it down below one and then you start taking it down below one or 0.8 and then and the, the curve continues to slope. That shows that the disease spread is, is the trend is in the right way. Our trend is up this direction, which means you have to do more testing. This is so basic. This is like basic from basic. Now, here's is what we all need to be holding. Are you guys aware that right now, sitting in the state coffers, is over six, sixty million million that was supposed to be allocated by the Biden administration, brought to us by our legislators to do school testing. Is anybody doing school testing broadly? And it's going to be soon up to 80 or 100 by the time we hit the fall. And they, they, they showed when one of the news channels called me about that, and I kind of threw them down that channel and they did a TV report, it was Gina Mangieri. Then the next day they did a little, a little blurb on the news to say, oh, look, we're doing this little pilot out in Waianae to, to check school. One little pilot to do it when we have an entire freaking um, year lost for our poor kids. And guess what? They're not vaccinated. They're still getting the disease. We got to take care of our keiki because if our keiki is not taken care of, then we basically are, are going to have it spread to those families, right? And then... I looked at the pilot, all right? I watched the TV and I put it on pause and I zoomed in. They're using the worst test on the planet right now called Binax Now, which the state has some out in the bunker. I can send you the CDC data. It's 36% accurate in surveillance, 36. They better have the parents sign a disclosure. By the way, you have a two out of three chance that we're not gonna find this because this is the most worthless, worthless test in the United States for surveillance testing. And our state is using it as a pilot because mm -hmm. whatever. So that's just, that just drives me crazy because I really studied the science of all the tests. And, and again, I had to pick the tests with and for the U.S. Olympics. And, you know, I think our kids should deserve because actually, you know what, the price points for the, for the Binax and the tests that the Olympics are using are about the same. But they, they don't even know. No one even knows about it. And, um, and so, you know, then, okay, then here's the other thing. We right now probably have about $120 million that's sitting in Department of Health coffers for testing in general, just for testing the public. There should be free testing at all types of setups across the island where people, if you even feel close, you have symptoms, or if you've been around someone, you just go in and get it. That's what all the foreign, that's what all the countries are doing across the United States. That's what I'm seeing everywhere they're doing. And then the final thing is, um, you know, just drives me crazy watching how much work and how well things were going when, when um, Premier was running all, our, all the tests on the Big Island, and then he just shut it all off precipitously. The way we kept it down on the Big Island was 
we did emergency cluster testing. As soon as there was a positive somewhere, whether it was one or two people within 12 hours, we would have a team out there, would be testing the housing, testing the family members. We did regular conjugate housing testing. So in the Pacific Island communities, Native Hawaiian communities, Filipino communities, um, the plantations, we were up there once a week, just testing on a regular basis. And then we went into the public housing and then those smaller rural communities where you have like, whether it was the Micronesian population or the Filipino population, which had been really hit hard by this, you go in, you develop friends, you meet the community leaders, and you go back again and again and again. And they shut it off and it goes up. And Oahu, they're not throwing it anywhere. They're not, no one's touching it on Oahu. Um, so anyways, testing should be just broadly everywhere available for free because there's a bucket load of money. The federal government and our legislators have to test our public to keep us safe. So frustrating. Uh, Doc, I wanted to <clears throat> go back to the screen only because I wanted to, my point was that when you look at the statewide number, 1.5% positive right up here, mm -hmm. the past seven days, that's the state. But when you, when you filter it down, let's say the big island, 3%, mm -hmm. it's double. It's double. And Kauai is 2%. And, and again, I guess my point here is that Every county, every community is different. And when you, when you use a broad brush and say, okay, you know, we're going to take the lower number, uh, your yeah. risk increases in those areas that have a higher positivity rate or a, high, or a lower vaccination rate. And exactly. that is my concern that as, as we open up, my, my question is, why the rush? Um, why <clears throat> are we in this state not concerned, or it doesn't appear that we're concerned. It sounded like when, when I watched the press conference yesterday or the day before, and they had uh, the, the, the state lab director and they had the epidemiologist and the governor, that you could sense the concern or apprehension in the, the epidemiologist as well as the uh, state lab director. But our, our governor and lieutenant governor, it seems, are very comfortable with moving forward and, and opening up. Uh, my concern is that we are, we are moving a little bit too fast and the variant really, ha we saw today uh, that it's in every, on every island. So we know that from, from going forward, we, and they tell us this, the, our state health people telling us, expect more cases. Yep. Shouldn't we be more proactive because this yep. virus is, or this variant is still surfacing and, and being uh, identified, shouldn't we be more proactive than reactive? And Yeah, um, I wanna throw a few points out to the, to the, um, to the viewers. Number one, um, kudos to Sarah Kimball, our, our epidemiologist. She's such a, a solid person, you know, past from, from compared to our, our past experience. Um, same thing with our state lab director solid guy. I've had tons of contact with them. And then we go to, um, to Libby. Um, Libby stepped up. She was called to duty. Um, she stepped up. I mean, of course, relative to Bruce, she's, uh, she is, um, you know, just uh, different. But all of them are basically, I think, squelched to basically beyond what the, what the, what the story is that they're able to say. Like you said, you saw the squirming and the, and the issues. And I, I know with the expertise of some of those people, they know it. They know, they know the issue, but they don't have the ability to say that. You guys know how Governor um, Ige uh, governs. He has a very small silo. He stays within that silo. And it's filled with a lot of people who agree with him. You know? And you don't stay in the silo if you don't agree. And, and he's very, you know, he's an engineer by training. He's very, very diligent or very slow to make decisions. But, um, but in, in general, uh, I think, you know, we're all seeing that there is a, um, uh, a push to, to move to employment, right? A push to move to the visitor industry saying enough's enough. And, you know, we've been getting that push and pull from the jobs in the visitor industry 
to the people's safety. And so uh, my concern is from what we've seen is if you look at those findings that you just put up uh, of the positivities, guess what? Look at the, look at the, you don't have to be a, a mathematician to see the slope of those graphs. They were down and then all of a sudden we're going boom, boom, up, up, every island, up. And that's what the real concern is right now. We have a warning sign, we know what it is, and we better be watching that data that if, that if those data points don't drop precipitously, then we need to understand that this is not the right time to do this. And I can tell you the reason I'm saying what's the data is, as I said, the book is written. This is so much more contagious. Look at, look at London, look at the United Kingdom, which was, was just ready to open up, okay? Study that, go back guys, because I'm in good contact with leaders throughout there. And they were ready to go the Delta variant hit, they're already pushed back a month because they saw exactly what we saw and went bing, bing, bing. And within three weeks in certain areas, it started to spike everywhere. And then in Scotland, the next spike, and they immediately shut down opening up of their full opening of their bars and restaurants. The Delta variant is very serious. It's very contagious. And the, 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 the roadmap is right in front of us. We better you know, there better be a real quick response if we see these positivity rates going up. So. Well, let me ask you this, Doc. Besides vaccination and wearing your mask and social distance, is there anything else that the people of Hawaii should do? Because when this whole thing started, I mean, just the, the virus itself, we were trying to prevent it from coming into the state. And I guess the Lieutenant Governor felt that, you know, it's pretty, it was getting to a point that it was getting pretty safe, right? But now this new variant, which had, it was never in the state before, is just coming like gangbusters on the scene. And yet we're having reports that travel related, travel related, travel related with this variant, it almost seems as if there's very little community spread, just travel related, travel related, travel related. So there's gonna be at some point that it's gonna work its way from the outside and spike inwards. And probably we'll see a rebound, right? They'll start to start infecting everywhere else. How do we stop it? So what do the people of Hawaii need to do? Huh. Um, okay, here's, here's the first thing I can tell you. It's already happening. The community spread is already happening, but we're not testing to find it. That's the first issue. That's the first issue that's obvious. You can't have a 10% um, penetration of a variant that's contagious and not have it already be uh, well within a community spread. It just doesn't, doesn't happen that way when it's so contagious. Um, so that's already happening. Uh, the second issue that we have to look at is that um, really studying where we have our vaccine, our vaccinated groups and, our, and we don't have our vaccinated groups. And that's where you have to look at the skew. You, if you look at that total data, 70%, you have to break that down. We have 99% right of our kapuna, great, that are, that are vaccinated. But when you take it down and you look at the the, um, the, 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 the keiki on up to the 49, they're no way near. What do we, what do we we're, we're, we're in the, we're barely, we're barely in the, what, the 40 percent with that, with that type of cluster, that type of group when you look at the vaccinations. And, um, and so that's half our population is still at risk. And guess what? Go look at the fatality rates. You still die between 40 and 49, and you still die between 30 and 35. You can still die and be hospitalized when you're in your teens. So fortunately, the death rates in our children are low. But you know, you, you really need to, to not, to, I, it bothers me from the st 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 perspective when we talk about the total number and not look at the global number, because I have always stood up and I believe that every citizen deserves 
the same, right? And yes, I believe you should get vaccinated. I stand up, but you know what's America? We have screwed up the vaccination rollout in our country very badly. And um, it is going to be, and we overestimated. You can go look at all of my stuff in December and January. And man, I was spot on. I was saying, you know, people were saying, oh, it's going to be April. I said, no way. It's going to be well into the fall. If even then, it's going to be towards the end of the year to hit these numbers. And then the other thing is this, this garbage about herd immunity. It's garbage. You know, we have a Delta variant in maybe 85%, you will start to see a pretty significant drop. How do you get to 85%? It's impossible. It's impossible, right? We're not going to get to 85%. We have 15% that have already said in our state, never, they're never going to get it. You know, we have another group with, we, we are going to be slugging it out one by one to keep pushing up. It's going to keep that, that curve is going to keep stretching out again and again and again. So, you know, the answer to what you guys are saying, it's going right back to the basics for the way the book is written. And that is, if that positivity rate starts jumping up and we start getting into consistent 3%, 4%, 5%, guess what? There's only one answer. And that's, we're going to shut down. That's the only way this works, just like England is doing and just like all these other countries have done. And see, that's what I think you guys are saying. I want our people to go to work. I want them to go to work safely. I want a population to be safe, right? And you do it by being gradual and you do it. I mean, we're doing great. We're doing, you know, we're, we're doing great as an economy right now. Um, we need to continue to be the safest place on the planet. And I think just fully opening up um, is, a, is a concern. That's a, that's a big concern, very big concern for me. Sorry, again, I rambled. I don't know, did I even answer no, your question? You know, Doc, <clears throat> Doc, we... As I told our viewers before you came on, we, we don't know what you're going to say. We, you know, you've been busy and, and we really haven't spoken at all um, for, for a while. And, you know, I, I, you mentioned other countries that were prepared, starting to open up the variant, the Delta made its, made its presence known, Boop, push it back a month. Let's figure it out. Let's see what this variant is going to do in our community. But that's not happening here in Hawaii. I listened to the, the press conference and one of the questions that the media asked, uh, I believe it was the governor, I can't remember who answered, what about people that already have had the va a virus, had COVID and recovered, shouldn't they be excluded from the, from the percentage to reach this this unreachable herd immunity or 70%. I don't even get into that discussion. You already mentioned that it. it's, it's closer to 90% with the variant and that's subject to change if we get more variants. There, were, there was talk about, okay, how, you're gonna open up to 75% capacity, but you're still required to follow the six foot rule. And the, the Honolulu mayor said it's mathematically impossible. If you go to 75%, you can't do it with six feet separation between tables. So they're gonna have to basically violate the six foot rule. All of these accommodations are being made while the variant is starting to replicate itself here in Hawaii. And we're gonna, every one of them has acknowledged that we're gonna see more. Wouldn't it be wise in your opinion to say, oh, we're gonna move as done in Europe, we're gonna move our opening date a month to see. We wanna see what this variant is going to do wouldn't that be a wise totally. decision? Totally. Yeah. If, I was, if I was making the decision, that's what I would do. I would say we already just had our, our um, epidemiologist and our lab director show that the, that the variant has just raced to every corner. And, um, and we've seen what the other countries or states are experiencing. You can look at the pockets across the country where this is starting to, to race in the lower vaccinated areas. And we just need to be patient. We need to be patient and we need to be, you know, getting our, our state under control because I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not, I wanna rage on the bars because, you know, bars need to do it, but just keep open, but spread out, you know, don't go back to putting people side by side. Guys, here's the other thing. Let me, let me tell you something, I didn't say this. You know, I'm all over the country with the Olympics, right? And uh, I was all over with, you know, the, my, my other sports in the SEC. So I had, 
I had a lot of time down in the areas with the low vaccination rates. I am going to mark, I want you to mark my word on this. I came out and I was like saying, they should be canning the director of the CDC. She should have been removed because when they made that edict, which was so poorly done to say, oh, guess what, everybody? You don't have to wear your masks now when you're out in public if you're vaccinated. Oh my God. There is no one, and I mean this guys, no one wearing any masks through Texas, um, uh, Georgia, um, uh, Nebraska, you name it, everywhere I'm going, no mask everywhere. The bars, there's no separation. They're just people corner to corner. And so they're supposed to be not wearing the mask if they're vaccinated. Well, their vaccination rate's about 30%, but there's no mask. That means two out of three people are not telling the truth, right? And they're not wearing their masks. Do you know how fast this Delta variant is going to spread through the South? It's going to rip the South and rip these states where the governors are dropping the mask mandates. You know, Governor Ige has done some good things at keeping that inside mask mandate. That's positive. I'll, you know, I'll give him kudos for that because a lot of people are not pushing that. That's really important because indoor spread is where it happens. For, so the people of Hawaii, indoors, closed environment, that is where the danger. But with the Delta variant, guess what? It's so contagious. There's going to be a lot more push to know that it can happen in outdoors because you only need a few little droplets to start having the spread. Um, so we have to be really careful with group gatherings and indoors because that's where it's going to happen, so. What about planes? Somebody just said right now, planes. You know, you're talking about the spread. We, we've done, we, we, you know, the many times you come on, you've talked about it before and I still, don't understand why people just, you know, the, the ones that say, no, planes are safe. I say, but the tons and tons of studies that's being done, especially with Japan, with its high-tech, high-speed film, filming using lasers, it just shows how it can go from one side of the room and stay aloft and reach the other side. Mm -hmm. So it dropped off. I mean, it's almost you sitting in row 16 and you coughing for it and catching it all up to first class. That's, right. that's the way. Um, I've seen all the data. I've seen all the, the infrareds, all the pictures. And um, there is some positives for the, cir the circulation within airplanes. It is somewhat a little bit protective. The other thing I can tell you, since I have logged so many flights, I mean, I've done, I, I can't tell you how much I've flown and I pay attention to this everywhere. They do really enforce the mask mandates on these planes. I mean, I, I've been on planes where I see people arguing and being taken off the plane and, and they make them take the gator off and put a real surgical mask on. And I've seen them you know, tell people to put it back on in the planes. And so I think that is making a major difference. Um, do I think that people do get some transmission on a plane? If you're sitting near a super spreader and someone's really spewing it out, I yeah, of course, I do think you would be at risk. Um, but I think relative because of the mask mandate and because of the way the circulation goes and then it goes down to the floors, there's plenty of studies that show that. Uh, I think it's less problematic than it would be by, by being inside um, at a, a, a restaurant. A restaurant's concerning to me you know, because even though you're sitting at your table, you guys have seen all those the data on that. Someone can be three tables over and be, depending on the way the circulation goes, you know, it can spread to a 10 table wide area if you have a super spreader. And one of the things that really drives me crazy that I've seen all over the country where we have a great place to do it, they have been so creative where they're partially blocking the edges of streets off where they might take one lane and they'll let the tables, they'll let the restaurant come out and put outdoor tables with umbrellas, even in big urban areas, or like you might take a, you know, a street down in Waikiki and they might block off a, a street and let some restaurants set up on the outside all over the country. They're doing that where they're encouraging restaurants to set up outdoors. 
And I see hardly any of that creativity anywhere around here. And we're a perfect place to do it. I'd be much happier if we opened up to uh, restaurants in the outside and those that used to be indoors, find places for them to pop up outside. So, so one, la one last thing, G getting back to the aircraft, you know, the circulation that you talked about, we know that, you know, we, we've had people write to us saying that, you know, I work for the airlines. I know that the circulation, it pulls the air down to the floor. You see those little slots on the floor and then air, you know, it circulates within a system and it, it be introduced back into the, the rest of the fuselage. The thing that I can't understand, and, and I'm trying to wrap my head around it, but to me, it seems as if I'm sitting close to that vent, the suction vent, right? That means that all the bad air got to pass me to get to that vent. <laughs> so, <laughs> so wouldn't I be better off sitting way in the middle aisle than having a, a seat with a view? But the seat, it looks like the seat with a view comes with a penalty on top of that, you know? It's, it's two-edged sword, maybe the middle <laughs> seat. Um, because then in, the, in the, that seat, then you have people walking up and down, going back and forth to the bathroom. Yeah. and they're coughing there and you get the whole, you get the whole, I, so it's it's really not an easy answer it's not you know i know fly the damn plane get up there in the cockpit fly the damn plane like this come on yeah or hell i would take put me in one of those big ass doll carriers in the bottom and give me a, <laughs> give, me a give me a bowl of food and i'll just sit there and howl with the boys you know but uh <laughs> that's safer but uh, yeah. The day my wife and I decide to actually jump on a plane to go see our kids, I'm sitting in the lavatory. <laughs> I'm just sitting in the lavatory. I tell a flight attendant, if somebody really needs to go knock twice, I'll come out and they can use the restroom. But I am, man, it's crazy. You know what is even worse, Doc? Is the airports, TSA, oh. back plane. Now, <clears throat> every day, I shouldn't say every day, at least three times a week, I make it a point to drive through the airport, Charlie. You appreciate this. Yeah. On Kauai, we get all the mainland flights come Kauai at the same time. All the direct flights. Yeah. The brilliant, whoever scheduled that, the brilliant person, all of the flights come at the same time. So that airport obviously doesn't have the capacity to hold three or four direct flights from the mainland. Boarding and unloading. You got thousands of people. When I drive past and I see those guys waiting in line, there is absolutely no social distancing. Exactly. I think the threat is probably greater at the airports, in the terminals, and baggage claim and TSAs than in the plane. I I can't agree. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm in a, again the number of flights I've taken is ridiculous, uh, back and forth, and I look at the crowded and all these flights are full. The airlines are all full, full. And you know those seating areas when you're at a gate, there's not enough seats for a full flight. The seating area is probably what, 50%? You get people on top of people and there's people walking and people sitting on the floor. And you know, my wife and I are just, um, uh, we're just aghast at it, you know, totally aghast at it. Oh, let me add one thing to you and to the viewers. If you really want to be safe, which is what we'll do is, Get yourself an N95 and have someone who knows how to fit it and wear an N95 on a flight in an airplane. Because remember, we can wear an N95 in an ICU and it can protect you against the droplets. So that is something, if you're going to be at high risk, it's worth it because they're all dirt cheap now. The prices are everywhere uh, versus the surgical mask. It's the, it's the highest step up. But, but that is an answer I should have told both of you when you said, what else can the public do to protect themselves from the Delta variant? If you're going to be out in the public and you're going to be in a high risk area, you know it's going to be crowded. Get yourself um, and spend a little extra money for an N95, uh, and that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Man, Doc, we, we're already at 7:47. You know, and I wanted to give you some time to address our viewers. Uh, just sure, as whatever, you, as you yep. see fit. But I wanted to. Just share, you know, the messaging we get, and I think part of the problem here in Hawaii is that the messaging we've been getting the last couple of months was really almost a minimization of the dangers of COVID and the variants that in fact, uh, giving people reason to really let their guard down because of the messaging that we've been getting. Now you have had, you have been across the country, you've been across the world, you've worked with experts. We had Dr. Uh, 
Jerome came on a couple, a few weeks ago. Uh, he was very informative, basically say echoing what you're saying now. But how, I want you to be able to tell our viewers what we should be concerned with. Obviously, we all know we should be vaccinated, but you know we will have that segment of the population that will not get vaccinated. But what's your words of wisdom to our viewers, okay. uh, especially uh, as it relates to the variant and the fact that regardless of what is being told to us by political leaders, what should we be concerned about? Okay. Um, these are the things that drive me crazy that I don't hear uh, anyone at any level really echoing. And first of all, we are going to need boosters, right? Not a question. There will be the need for boosters right now. And uh, we're going to have a Moderna booster available probably in the fourth quarter this year because the South African variant was only 70% effective. And there's no question it's going to be pushed because guess what? Moderna wants to sell its uh, boosters and they've gone through the trials. And you know what? If I had a Moderna vaccine, I'd damn well want one in my arm because I want to make sure I'm protected against everything. Now, let's take it forward. Um, here's the biggest thing that really bothers me that is not being said at the federal level, even, you know, in, the, in our journals, we're seeing it. All right. So if you were an organ transplant patient, and you got a standard two shot, guess what? You have zip immunity, right? Zip. A study just came out that showed maybe a third shot's gonna take you up to 60 or 70%. That's just happening. So what my point is, is now they're just starting to get data now across the country and across the world for the next level, which is much broader and many people in our state suffer from, and that's the people with some degree of immunosuppression. So the question I have is, how do you know we're not doing any antibody testing to see if people are maintaining immunity. We're trusting just these somewhat loosely done group studies that are being done by the drug companies, which are a little biased. And my point is that we know that if people are on immunosuppressive medicine or they've been on steroids or they've been on um, some of the uh, uh, biologics, some of the meds to keep rheumatoid or arthritis down and things like that, they are technically immunosuppressed and they may not have full immunity. And how do, you, how do you know? We're not offering testing to these individuals. We may have people right now in our families that have some degree of immunosuppression and then their immunity may be either not there, which most of the studies are showing there, or it may be declining as time goes on. So. The, the thing that I'm trying to say to the people of uh, Hawaii is that um, we need to get prepared for the next level of what's going to happen. And number one, I believe we're going to have to have some broad evaluation so that Mel, you know, by a blood test, whether you have the right amount of immunity and your vaccine is working and Charlie, how, about, how do we know which one of the three of us, maybe it's not working as well. We know one out of 20, it's not going to work because it's only 95%. Who's the one out of 20 that's not, that's not going to have, the, have that? And then the next big question, a nice study coming out of Israel showed that, um, and Israel's very advanced healthcare, showed that uh, in the Kapuna, in the post 75 year olds um, with an mRNA vaccine, that after about six months, their immune system is declining in the amount of vaccination. So most of us believe that sometime early next year, there's going to be some degree of a broad scale recommendation to re-booster the elderly and those at risk. Um, so that's number one. You know, the first question is, I don't want people to be paranoid to want to know, do they have it or not, but be prepared if the option comes to test to know whether you have the vaccine working or not, be prepared to test. Second issue is, we're going to run out of the alphabet for variants. The variants are just going to keep on coming again and again and again. And in typical evolution, they're usually going to be more problematic than less problematic. That's what evolution is. The strongest survival, the fittest, the stronger type of variant is surviving. Most people don't realize there's hundreds and hundreds of variants that have been identified, but 
they just die off. The ones that aren't strong die off. And if they're, they're stronger, they rise up. We, we constantly, there's variants. You can, look at, you can look at the data that's coming out of the genetic um, mapping of it. There's, there's, there's a ridiculous number of variants that are out there, but only the strongest, more, more um, uh, uh, viral ones will survive. Now here is why it's totally, totally impossible for there not to be continued variants. What is the environment for a variant to develop? Number one, those, anybody that's immunosuppressed that has an odd immune system um, is, a, is a perfect place for the variant to develop in a, in a body where the, the in, um, antibodies are not killing it off. It can sit there and it can stay in there for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and just keep changing and saying, I'm at the buffet, I'm just gonna keep on eating and changing, let's get big and strong and fatter. Um, versus a strong immune system, you'll get it, you'll fight it. Um, and you know, after about seven days, you'll really start knocking it off. Then the other issue is if you have populations that are um, partially immunized, but or no immunizations, it just keeps spreading through populations. Well, guess what? Do you guys know what percent of the world is vaccinated as of today? 10%, 10%. We get 90 freaking percent of the world to go. How long is it going to take to vaccinate the rest of the world? As long as we have the world not vaccinated or not shut down and isolated, there's going to continue to be the opportunity for variants and to continue for the opportunity to spread. And then there's one other thing that we need to talk about, and I want to encourage the people of Hawaii to think about this, and this is something across the country, is another huge place for variants to occur is the partially vaccinated. Go look at the data, guys. It's pretty scary how many people get one shot of a two-shot vaccine and they don't show up to get the next one, right? And they get partial immunity and then the virus can get in them and it's like, mm, yeah, and it just can stay in there for a, a month and change. So it, it is beholden to the people of Hawaii, if you got shot number one, please get shot number two. That shot number one will give you some temporary protection in the first month or so. But after a while, you're just creating an unusual environment to allow the virus to really change and to not totally protect you. It will fade. You do need the two shots of, the, of that. So those are a couple of the big realities I want the people to know. Find a way in your minds to think about how, you know, that's why it's important to get vaccinated because you're, you know, good, the good news is you're probably gonna survive. You're probably not gonna die of this, but then it's gonna allow you to be a little more safe when you're going to go out. Um, but find, find a way to understand that we're gonna be living with this for years to come, okay? Years. So when I hear these people saying, oh, we're getting back to normal. Boy, I don't know guys, this is not normal when 40, percent of our population can die, you know, with just, uh, uh, because tourists are coming in with, uh, infections. So sorry, I'm babbling again. I'm, I could talk for days about this. It's not babbling doc. I think, you know, again, uh, we need to hear it. We need to hear it from experts. We need to hear it. You know, Mel and Charlie, you know, we, we're not experts. Uh, we, we, we bring experts to inform and educate. We don't want to bring fear to anybody, but we also need to let people know that this is what's happening. We talked about, Charlie and I have been talking about, in fact, Charlie brought it up one I actually didn't even think about it until one night we were chatting and he said, all the people that got vaccinated in January, December, January, whenever the first shots were administered, no one really thought, I, don't, I think a lot of people thought we would have wiped out COVID within six months, seven months. So the talk was, you know, after six months, we probably will need a booster. And, and you hit it on the head tonight. We don't even know. I don't know if my vaccine is still holding up. Charlie doesn't know. You don't know. Don't know. What happens now when the state opens up and 30% of the 60% vaccinated are no longer 100% or 60%, 70% immune, immune and become vulnerable to the virus. So there's a lot of things we don't know. And uh, I just wish people would be more proactive than, than just wait and deal with it. Because uh, again, unlike the mainland, Hawaii's medical resources, hospital resources uh, are limited. 
We don't have the luxury of flying someone on a helicopter or driving someone in an ambulance to a neighboring county or, or state. Um, I do want to give the people a little bit of straight up um, a shorty. Right now, the data is quite strong that you still are not dying if you've had the, the vaccine, right? We, and, and that's data that's basically just looking at the fatality rates. You know, I don't like that. You wait to see who died and then you test them to see it. You know, I'd rather be doing prospective data on it. And I think it is going to be time for the country to start doing the ability to be sampling the antibody data and sampling as it goes on. We're going to have to do that. So I do think, you know, I want to encourage people to say, if you're vaccinated, don't feel, oh no, my vaccine's done and, you know, I'm going to go out and die from COVID. No, you're still going to use precautions, but the data does show that the vaccines are protecting. Johnson & Johnson is about 70% effective in the Delta variant. Um, Pfizer and, uh, and Moderna are in the 90s. So it is holding up pretty strong for the data we have for the Delta variant. And the fatalities are by and large from the Delta variant are from non-vaccinated. So, um, but, but what's three months look like from now? What's six months? What's it gonna look like when we're at the first year? Uh, I don't know, that, that we don't know, we do not know. And I can tell you that if I have an opportunity I'm getting a booster in my arm. If they're not going to let me test to have to, uh, to see if I have immunity, I'll, when it's offered, I'll be running and saying, yep, yep, sign me up. I'll get a booster. Um, so, but then the whole question is, it's it's a question is going to be, what's that booster going to be made of? Because the, the likelihood is we're going to have variants that are going to develop that are going to bust through the Moderna and Pfizer you know, the like, likelihood they're going to bust through. Now I say bust through, those are still variants. Remember, the big difference is a mutation. That's what we don't want to see because that means the virus has changed too much. Usually the protein structure of the round ball will have changed. And right now we're only seeing the spikes as the majority of the change. Those spikes just keep getting much more sticky and they can hold on. And um, But when the ball and all that protein starts to change, then you can have a true mutation. Then we start all over. Then basically we're back to square one. And, um, and at 10% vaccination rate for the entire planet, we're, 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 it's probably the question of when, not if. I mean, it's just set it up to do it. So um, yeah. And uh, this crazy thing came out of National Geographic today. They they were doing some genetic research on um, on the uh, remains of people in Asia uh, from the hunter gatherer area, twenty thousand years ago, and they basically saw a massive change in the DNA and the genetics of these these um, remains that only would have occurred if a massive coronavirus um, infection had been spreading through the population and it went on for generations and generations. Um, if you, it's, it's just like you look at that and you go, oh man, so this has been cruising the planet before. It just, I just read it in National Geographic and it was crazy. Um, another, since we're talking about reading, uh, pull up an article by Dr. Larry Brilliant. He actually hangs in the Big Island sometime. He was one of the the individuals. He's in his seventies now. He's just a, a god in our mind. He he um, was partially responsible. One of the main people responsible for eradicating smallpox, and he has a great long um, uh, uh, interview that is published. And basically, almost everything I've just been saying to you, he's he's replicating and he's saying this is this is going to be with us. This is this just doesn't go away. It's a it's a really good article. If you want to talk about being at the top of the mountain for an expert in the world, that's that's a guy that is, and uh, so it's a it's a well worth a read. So, Charlie, can you book him on our show for next week? <laughs> I hey, I communicate with him. I have his email. I I seriously, guy, come on. Remember, I sent you Jerome Kim. Um, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I can, can, I can. We've become good friends as well, and and that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so 
for that, yeah. man. Thank you. Yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. I, he's a reference for me that I'll turn to and I have communication with him all the time. He's so, and he's so, you know, he's so down to earth and he's so he's genuine, you know, genuine yeah. like yourself. I mean, yeah. you know, I think, we, you know, we've, our perspectives, everyone's perspectives have changed quite a bit since this started a year and a half ago, going, almost going on two years now. We know yeah. so much more. And, uh, and that's the frustration that as even though we know more, and, and I think we even as lay people listening to people like yourself and other experts, we're concerned by some yeah. of the actions that, that we see happening. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I do have email connection with him. Um, maybe I'll see, man. Hey, you guys are like, you guys are world class. You know, you, you talk about world class, you know, you're, you, you, know, you talk world class experts, but you guys are world class on getting the experts on. I see you got ex former Governor Cayetano coming up. And I mean, you got, you, you, you got, you got the who's who in the state of Hawaii, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, maybe you can come on and partner with, with the, the, the top of the mountain expert and we can have a good time. Yeah. 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 No, he, no, he, he, he deserves his own stage, man. He, he, he's uh he's, he's a, a terrific guy. And uh, yeah. Um, it's uh, uh, Hey, Oh, one thing, let me, let me say this. This is one thing that where we started, maybe it's where for closing, I was say proudly, we, did not have a single U.S. Olympian eliminated because of COVID. We had some coaches and support people, and and you know people doing different things. But um, the the so far so good, and and such kudos to um, an amazing team of people that came together to put the put the protocols in play and to do the testing that we, that we put together. And uh, but most importantly, kudos to the athletes. Cause they're the ones that really did it and they're the ones that followed and were dedicated. So, uh, so far so good. I mean, we're still part way through. We have another day or two in track and field and we have another day or two in gymnastics, but, um, swimming, you guys know swimming's here. They're in Hawaii right now. Did you know that? Yeah. I saw that yeah. on the, on the, on the newspaper. Yeah. yeah. So we're, I'm, I'm down there. That's kind of one of the reasons I popped back. Um, I'm down there. Um, we'll be down there with my team testing them. So I'm testing all those swimmers. Uh, while they're here, and then uh, July 12, they had they head to Tokyo. So, yeah. So, as a COVID director, Doc, would you accept one of any of your coaches or athletes or anybody participating in the U.S. Olympics? Would you accept them into your program with, without testing and with a simple, what looks like a COVID vaccination card? Um. Okay. Well, let me let me throw this out to you. You guys will like this. You guys will like this. That's a good, this, see, and, the, and the, the viewers need to understand this was not teed up. We did not plan this in advance. So every single person vaccinated or not is tested in the Olympics. And they are tested. We're doing testing daily or every other day. And depending on where you are, guess what? You can walk in with a shiny vaccine car. You are still getting your PCR and you are still getting tested because guess what? you can have a breakthrough. You may be vaccinated, but you may get infected. And in our athletes, one of those people can ruin a career or our chances of these people have dedicated their lives. So if you want to look at being thorough, and I'm, I'm the guy that helped design it, write it, and is performing it, they're all being done. You can be, and okay, they're going to Japan. We have, I can tell you right now, you know, I'll, I'll, I don't want to point the point it out, but right now, um, one of the teams, and I'll keep it neutral because I'm not supposed to be sharing this, is um, over 90% vaccinated, okay? But they're all tested. And when they get to Japan, just because they're vaccinated, guess what? They're still going to get daily PCR tests because they can have a breakthrough. Um, maybe that's extreme, but it's, uh, but it's what is, it's how you do it. If you want to keep safe. Awesome. Charlie. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> a, lot of in, a lot of information to digest tonight, but you know, I'm, I'm glad you came on and you said what you said, because I think, you know, as lay people, sometimes we set ourselves up for failure if we don't do the right thing. And with this variant that's uh, here, it is moving so aggressively. It's, you know, like they said, when 
back in the, the Western days, you know, they, they get those wagon trains and they, they start circling them because they, they're, they're about ready to get attacked. If we don't take this thing very, very seriously, and if many that who are burnt out say, you know what, I've survived the worst, you know, what more can happen to me? So, yeah, they could ultimately pay the price. Then that's, then that's what I'm afraid of. That is what I'm really afraid of. So I, I, I want to thank you for coming on and just sharing the street facts. You know, no sugar coating. You, let, you, you leave it out there. Because a lot of times, many of our viewers get upset because they hear certain things in the morning news. You know, the first ones that up to bat when they have a special guest saying something about this vaccination uh, process that if we are vaccinated and if you get two vaccines, I mean, uh, if you get uh, your two shots, I could say, that you're totally immune. <laughs> I've been hearing this all the time about totally immunity. And that's why people get confused. You get people with two shots and yet they're still, they're still catching the, the, the virus. So that means that they're not totally immune. Yeah. Um, so those are the kind of things that we get concerned about. Let me throw a, a, a real final warning to the, to the viewers. Here's what I'm worried about. 35 to 50 right? I mean, because as you get up above 50 to 60, we have better rates. And I'll throw the 50 to 60 or as their kapuna, we're all getting vaccinated. 35 to 60. If you have a family member who is overweight, on some blood pressure medicines, maybe a smoker, maybe not, but overweight on some blood pressure medicines or diabetes and a little bit overweight, and they are not vaccinated, please implore them to wear their masks, to social distance, to not be going out in bars because they're going to have a chance that they can die. Okay. That's where I'm worried about our spike is in our society, because we all know, and remember now you're talking about the, the heart of my life and career as a physician. I mean, that's like, that's a pretty big part of the population when you com combine those things, but that's the risk. And I don't, I don't hear anybody saying that to the public right now, right? Has anybody stood in the news and said, hello, if you're not vaccinated, we got this Delta variant. And if you're stepping on the scale and you're this much or this much, or you're on your diabetes medicine, take precautions because you can die, you know? But that's, but reach out to your family members. Everybody knows who they are. They have to be careful. And, um, and, and then also, if you're in that 18 to 30 year old age group and you think you're you're on top of the world don't think don't think that you're at risk and one of the things that um, that's an interesting study that's starting to go on it's talking about the percentage of long term covid in those age groups they're not dying as much they still die but the chronic long term symptomatology it's fairly significant and can go on for two months, three months or longer. So, you know, there's, there's, there's just the reality and the truth we have to look at that, um, you know, be careful, if, you know, tell your family members, you know, if you care for them, tell them. And, uh, and you know, because I'll tell you, you know, the bars and restaurants and, you know, I'm, I've got kids in the twenties and, you know, they're out with their friends and there is this feeling like, you know, hey, the world's okay and they're invincible. No, don't. So that's my final word. Well, thank you, Doc. You know, I, I always challenge people that, you know, I think, you know, COVID is, there's just so many moving parts that you, you know, inform and educate yourself. Uh, this show is, is just one, one avenue, but uh, pay attention to what's going on because this variant is, is new. It's like COVID all over again. And uh, while you're vaccinated, you're somewhat protected, you know, your best chance of, of surviving is being vaccinated. Yes. You know, uh, on the news the other morning or uh, at the press conference that I was talking about when they asked Dr. Kemble, how many of those people hospitalized currently that were, you know, in this current wave um, were fully vaccinated? And, and she said, I believe she said eight. And, um, you know, and yet we had been told a couple of days prior in the morning news that there were no hospitalized people that were vaccinated. The reality is that 
it's your best defense, but it, it, it's, it's not 100%. Nothing is 100%. So, guys, we got to be careful. If you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated. Yeah. And even if you have been vaccinated, please continue to wear your mask and social distance and all of that. That's right. And avoid those. Indoor is where it occurs. Get out in the trade winds. you got a little safety. If you want your family, be out in the yard. Be out there where the, where the breezes are blowing and, and separate. It's tremendous, tremendous decrease of um, disease spread outdoors. Be careful indoors and poorly vented. That's, that's another huge, huge one. Well, Doc, again, thank you very much. Viewers, thank you for joining us tonight. I know we went uh, beyond our time, but uh, we want to take advantage of Dr. Miskovich, uh, our celebrity U.S. Uh, Olympic COVID director. Um, uh, we sent our best to the Olympic teams, and I've been yeah. watching the tryouts. Or the, 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 it's pretty cool. We watched swimming. We watched some track and field. Uh, we're so proud of these athletes. Go bring home the gold, Doc. Go, go help them bring home the gold. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Uh, on Monday, we have uh, Governor Cayetano will be on. That should be an interesting show. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's uh, unfiltered as well, and we'll see. <laughs> uh, it should be a fun show. It should be a fun show. So, yep. with that, everyone, I want to just say thank you again. God bless you guys. Stay safe. We'll see you guys on Monday night. Thanks, Doc. You guys be thank safe. You guys. Take care. See you. Thank Aloha. you. Take care, guys. Aloha.